Yeah, I had a, okay, very good. So um, uh, let's go ahead and start with Michael. Uh, Michael Fig, we have two Michaels here. Hi, yeah, so um, I currently have uh, an issue up on the handle promise repository on eventual send. So I'll just share that screen in a second. Yeah, and also uh, don't, don't assume people here already are up to speed on uh, handled promise and eventual send. So uh, giving- We'll get uh, into that very uh, shortly. Yeah, tar target and background, having that uh, publicly recorded would be great. Okay. Um, okay, so I'll just share the screen. Uh, Invention and proposal. Uh, oh, this is going really slow. Um, For some reason, proposes your entire shared screen is in the upper left corner of the window rather than stretching to fill the whole window. Does, ever, does anybody else see that? I think you might. Oh, do you just mean the it, read it's, size? Oh, it looks fine to me. Yeah, oh, it's it, just it, it, looks, it looks fine now. I just had to jiggle the size of the window. Okay. Okay. Uh, so the eventual proposal is supported by Mark, Chip, and I as far as uh, um, adding functionality to promises so that they can be used as remote references and send RPC messages and get messages down a promise before it has resolved. So that way, we have back to promise, but there's an optimization called promise pipelining that Mark has talked about in, in great detail in the past, where basically you don't have to wait for the result of a, of a call in order to refer to it in a future call. So um, this basically uh, creates a new promise constructor which is analogous to proxy handler, but instead it looks much more like the promise constructor where you have a resolve and a reject method and execute it can say how the, the promise is resolved. And there's also this other one that we've currently named off with remote, which basically allows you to make a remote reference that has its own handler that's different from the handler that was first assigned to the handle promise. Uh, so um, I've, I've bounced this off a couple of people, but essentially um, I think this idea is having a bit of a tricky, of a tricky time getting traction in TC39 because people don't see what a handle promise does for you that a proxy can't. And uh, there are various explanations of this, but they're, they're fairly involved. And so I was proposing that uh, in our terminology, uh, instead of using the word handle promise, we change it to be async proxy. In the same way that every other async construction is a construction that has uh, been specially tailored for promises. Uh, and it's analogous to a proxy in the same way that an async iterator is analogous to an iterator. But the interesting thing is that it provides a lot more opportunities for optimization than a regular proxy does. Uh, there's an associate term presence and remote in this case too, but I don't think we really have to talk about that at this point. But I, I wanted to put forward this one idea first. Actually, I was hoping that the, 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 the presence and, and remote uh, and the issue about whether to swap them or do something else and what the uh, you know, pros and cons are uh, was actually the thing I most wanted to talk about. Um, the, um, uh, the idea that of naming handled promise something that emphasizes 
that there's an that there's a loose analogy with proxy um, uh, sounds good, but uh, async proxy to me suggests a much tighter analogy than we actually have. The async iterator really is uh, taking the entirety of the iterator design and uh, modifying things to be uh, from X to promise of X. Um, uh, but really, you know, whole hog adopting the iterator design. Likewise, async functions uh, have, you know, are, are based on all of functions uh, plus additional uh, asynchrony with the weight uh, and returning a promise. Um, I think that if we called it async proxy, then people would expect the entirety of um, uh, the, the proxy functionality with the get own property trap and all of that stuff is not mm. part of what we want to support in a distributed computing model. Um, I think people would project that onto the proposal and we would have uh, worse problems. Um, okay. So, um, so go, sorry, go ahead. I would have uh, a different proposal for that then, but it requires that we talk remotes and presences. So uh, I will I will tackle this now since it's one of the things you wanted to talk about. But the the basic idea is that um, a a presence or a remote is uh, there's. There's a computing layer, there's a Marshall layer, which converts objects to be sent over the wire. And uh, we have in that, that Marshall layer, the notion of a presence or a remote. And wh what they are exactly is a bit uh, nuanced. But um, for our handle promises, we, we want to be able to create handle promises in all sorts of different situations, not necessarily for marshalling remotely. And, and so the Marshall layer has one idea of, a, of an object that can be remoted to another place. And the, the handle promise has the idea of a, a presence or something, something that where uh, when a handle promise resolves, it resolves into an object that is a stand-in for something else. Uh, and in that sense, if we, the rest of this proposal is to say, if we adopt the term, we readopt the term presence to be what the handle promise resolves into. And as far as the remote, uh, we make our martial layer understand remotables, which are things that can be passed to other, or can be referenced from other remote contexts. So in that sense, I might consider making a, the presence term, uh, something like an async async presence, is what generates a presence. So one one of the key things there that's important to understand is the uh, separation of the two abstraction layers. That uh, Marshall is built on handle promise, and uses it uh, to build a particular distributed object system uh, with a distributed, with a particular distributed object semantics. Uh, uh, but handle promise doesn't know anything about Marshall and is much more general than uh, in terms, I mean, is, is much more neutral with regard to uh, what kind of distributed object semantics, if any, is built on top of it. Um, uh, so the the thing that is currently called a presence in the handle promise proposal, and which Michael is proposing continue to be called presence, uh, is um, when you have a handled unresolved promise and you want to make it into a handled fulfilled promise such that Vens that have been posted on it, uh, such that the uh, success callback of the then fires. The success callback of the then can only fire 
if the promise is now considered to be in a fulfilled state. We want to uphold all the invariants of the existing promises. Um, uh, and when the success callback fires, uh, you have to, it has to receive something that is a non-venable. Um, so uh, it can't, in the case where you're implementing a distributed object system, what the promise actually was fulfilled to, in the sense of what it now concretely designates, is an object that's elsewhere. So because it's elsewhere, it's not something that you can give to the success handler to the success callback of the then. So the, the presence or whatever we call it uh, has to be the local non-venable whose purpose is to stand for the remote object that the promise was actually fulfilled to. So it's, it locally represents that fulfillment. Uh, furthermore, um, the, um, the till dot or the um, uh, handled promise dot, you know, handle promise dot um, uh, apply, uh, vari variations of apply um, uh, remote operations can take either a, rem a, a, a if, if you give it a, um, uh, a presence, then it actually causes the message to be sent to the remote object. Um, so that in that sense, it's also a representative of the remote object, which is if you did a tilde operation on a normal local object, uh, you would just be doing the operation eventually on the actual local object. Whereas in this case, it goes to the remote object. Um, uh, so, uh, uh, so that's, I think, a fairly complete explanation of what the semantics of it is from the perspective of the eventual send proposal in isolation. Uh, now, from the perspective of um, the distributed object system that we build on top of this, um, uh, we've got two corresponding concepts that need names neither of which is the name that we choose um, for this thing, even though they're directly related. Um, there is a, uh, I, I like the word remotable, a, uh, our distributed object system basically divides passable objects into those that are um, uh, uh, pass by copy, uh, in which case uh, just the contents of them are shallowly copied, shallowly in the sense that then the, the things that you reach from the shallow copy are then passed according to whatever their pa passability is. Uh, and then there are, there's the, a remotable thing would be an object with methods that is stationary where the object itself remains where it is, and what is received elsewhere is um, a capability to remotely send messages to the original object at the original location. Um, so, um, uh, so the original remotable uh, would be the, uh, the object at its actual location with the actual methods. And then the, let's say, remote, uh, which is what Michael is proposing, uh, would be the thing that's uh, created elsewhere out of uh, this, um, in Michael's proposal, presence. Um, out of this presence object, it would be the Marshall layer that, her, that, that uses the handle promise layer to turn a presence into a remote. Um, uh, so, uh, Michael, am I capturing the, both the, both what your the names you're proposing and what the relationship is level of abstraction wise? Um, yeah, so I removed the idea of remote necessarily, but specified remotable only. So 
we have a remotable presence or just a plain remotable? Both of which are, are identified by the Marshall layer as remotable. So the remotable actual is not a remotable presence, obviously. And then the things I was calling remotes would just be remotable presences, which are the things that indicate that the actual remotable is elsewhere. Yes, that's correct. Interesting, okay. So uh, the, the other thing, the, the main reason why I, I think we should change the name of Handel Promise is that it conflicts currently with the notion of promises that have then, then methods attached to them, which people call handled promises versus unhandled promises, which do not have then methods attached. Yeah, so, so I agree with that. Uh, I, I, um, so, so finding a, a better term for handled promise, I think is also something we should try to figure out um, uh, as part of this whole terminology replacement. I was not objecting to changing the name from handle promise earlier. I was just objecting to the name uh, async proxy uh, or in general adjective proxy because it's only a loose analogy. Um, might, but, um, might it be something like async presence to associate, to impl imply that we have promises and we have presences and this is how you wire them together? Well, it's it's explicitly not the presence. And may I may I, may I make a small suggestion? Um, yeah, please. I know you guys hate uh, top level adding top level globals um, in general. Um, I would suggest we're actually that, proposing that we're actually proposing this as a top level global. Right, but what I'm getting at is, have you considered the possibility of adding it as a uh, method under the promise global. Um, the reason being, you've got promise.resolve, promise.reject already defined. It might make sense to put it underneath promise directly. And then whatever name you come up with shouldn't conflict with anything. Yeah, and it does provide a, an anchor for association. That is a, a reasonably good idea. Uh, there, we will need a constructor object. Um, and yeah. there is no precedent for having a constructor object underneath uh, another constructor. Um, is it really uh, necessary to have it as a constructor? If it's on promise, it could just be uh, you give it a fulfiller function. Uh, it could be a functional uh, uh, implementation as opposed to um, like a class. Like a maker, a make something instead of a new something? Like promise.handle or something like that. And then you just give it a handler that is called like an event handler, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, we, we, actually, we actually did start there. Um, we, I think the, the early, early form of this proposal started with a promise.makehandled or something like that. Yeah, and that's how it looked in queue. So I think the only thing that stopped us from doing that was that we wanted to add these static methods as well that, that are like apply function and apply method and stuff like that. And people would probably complain about adding that to promise. But if we nested it within the only, the only single property that we had to promise, that would be something useful, I think. So we, the static methods still need to go somewhere. Yes, they could go underneath the constructor is what I'm saying. What, what does the, underneath the mean? Like, like as property of the maker as opposed to... Oh, as property of the make method? Yeah. Uh, that there's no... I mean, that, that does work. Um, for whatever reason, uh, we rarely do that, add methods to methods. Um, but We're also talking work. about a third level of indirection, promise.food.bar. Yes. That's right. Yeah. That, that exactly. could get ugly, but it would be better, I think, than having another top level global. That's peanut gallery opinion there. There's also proxy.revocable, I think, or something like that, which is um, a variant of proxy that is 
technically a constructor, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, that, so, is a, that, that is a very good point. It's actually not a constructor. I believe it's not a constructor, uh, although I've never tried awesome. saying new on it. Uh, I, I just invoke it as a function. Um, uh, uh, there is, a, but, the, but uh, the, this issue about whether or not it should be a constructor is interesting because the current, the current proposal has handled promise be a constructor, but we actually violate the constructor pattern um, because handled promise dot prototype is, the, is purposely and necessarily the same object as promise dot prototype. Um, it could be that um, class extends promise would give you a new, um, um, you know, uh, derived class that you could define on it the, the handlers, uh, the, the, you know, the extensions that you want. And then if you use that um, somehow as, as the, um, you know. Yeah. The, 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 um, but yeah, the, the, having it be a derived class, I mean, this is the way in which, um, as, the more I talk about this, the more I'm coming to like the static method. Um, uh, the people, what people expect of the constructor or a derived class uh, is that it has its own prototype, that we would have a handled promise.prototype that inherits from promise.prototype. Uh, and that you could distinguish promises from handled promises at the consumer slide. And we don't, for example, by using instance of. Uh, and we don't want any of that. Um, uh, we want the, um, uh, in this sense, the, the proxy analogy also continues to hold, uh, which is from the consumer side, it just looks like a promise. It just is a promise. It's just that the behavior provokes by doing things with it uh, changes uh, because a handler is invoked, but you can't tell that from the consumption side. Um, Michael Fig questions: so, What are uh, what are the what are the uh, uh, in addition to the the constructor for this? What are the other functions that we were planning to hang off of it? Uh, apply function, apply method, and uh, get. Are these ones? Um, yeah. yeah, which so we. Which... I I wouldn't object to having it be uh, a property of of the the of the uh, con of the constructor like the maker, simply maker, because yeah. we're we're not when we're used we're expecting latency, so it's not a really a terrible thing to direct through a second object. <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, and also these methods are things that user code would almost never mention. They're really yeah. there to explain what the syntactic sugar means. I think that all of these would be reasonable functions to hang off of the, pr the promise constructor itself. Um, uh, since the first argument in all cases could be a promise, is that right? That's correct. Yes, yes, um, um, it would. I, th I think. Um, uh, I think that should be considered. I think um, uh, the main. The reason why I've shied away from that now that I'm saying it out loud, um, I think it might be a bad reason. The reason I'm shying away from that is simply. Um, putting it directly on promise, I suspect will create more, more committee resistance. Mm -hmm. And that is, not an, that is not an excuse, now that I'm saying it loud, it's not an excuse that I respect for proposing something worse. Um, uh, I should always start by proposing whatever I think is best and only back off if we actually get resistance. Uh, because some, sometimes people propose something worse when they actually could have got something better. And I think that might be the case here as well. It sounds like um, 
this is a design point that should be captured somewhere in the proposal, whether we go with a, a, a new top level or something under promise, the, just the reasoning behind that and why the alternate, the opposite was rejected should be captured in the document somewhere. Yeah, the, I like for the, the so apply function and apply method have analogies, but the get function is exactly the same as q.get, which is analogous to promise, uh, capital P promise.get in, uh, in the modern world. So I think there's a precedent for that. Quote, uh, connected promise as opposed to something else. I just want to find other, other things that would suit I, 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 the place of what we're calling handled. Go ahead. Yeah. I, I think there's a tension here that 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 we're kind of trapped by or kind of haven't kind of captured in the terminology, which is which we see in terms like presence and remote. And our whole motivation for doing this really is, is all about setting up the conditions under which we can do uh, distributed computation and remote messaging. Um, but we're not proposing uh, uh, distributed uh, computation or remote messaging per se. We're not adding those things to the language. So any terminology which implies uh, remote messaging, distributed programming, kind of, it, it feels like that's, that's, um, you know, it, 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 it has the sort of rhetorical thing of, uh, it hints at a greater agenda, which we're not, you know, we're not keeping that secret. We do have a greater agenda. We've been very open about what it is. Nevertheless, as a piece of mechanism in the language, I think it would be better if we could describe it in terms of the existing language and what this would add to it directly. And it can be used for the implementation of remote messaging, but presumably yeah. it can be used for other things like talking to workers or something, who knows what it is, but there's you know various other use cases we might anticipate and terminology that sort of kind of has baked into it presumptions about what your use cases are feels somewhat bothersome to me. Promise that callable, perhaps? I think maybe. No, call, 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 callable has a very specific meaning in JavaScript. Right. And, yes. and oh, things okay. that are callable are type of function. Yeah. And, and, and you, is, can, you can call them as functions. This is one of the reasons why I kind of liked the async proxy suggestion, mm -hmm. although I, I completely concur with, with Markham's concerns about leading people down the garden path with respect to proxies. So yeah, um, yeah handled promise actually kind of worked with your point because the part of the loose analogy with proxies is that there's a handler and that operations on the promise trap to the handler. So something that suggests that this is something that for which operations trap, uh, I think would be good. Uh, maybe starting from the word trap rather than starting from the word handler, I don't know. Asala, I think you were about to say something. Yeah, because um, the more I, uh, you know, the, the more I listened about um, uh, NTC discussions, basically, um, you know, pr proxy.revocable kind of like has like cookie points already. Like they, they already kind of like bit and people are using it or not. I don't know. Yeah. I never do. Um, it might not be an ideal uh, thing, but it also is ideal that most people don't use proxy.revocable or, or bother to wonder why it's used. Um, so so proxy dot, you know, um, Delegated or handled or you know ooh, asynchronous. Ooh, 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 ooh. Delegated. delegated promise. Yeah. Delegated Prom promise. Promise not delegated sounds wonderful. Promise not delegated. Yes. Bravo. Yes. Thank you, Sal. Yes. 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 Or, or so proxy dot. Right. So very nice. Yes. Very nice. Yes. We, we probably don't want promise though. Uh, we probably don't want proxy just for the same reasons that Mark and 
And yeah, and but I mean, I mean it, might, it might be kind of using whatever whatever uh, good will was there to let proxy dot revocable in. Um, <laughs> I see. Yeah, could could, could be yeah. um, at least to get the discussion rolling and then back down to promise dot if you can. Yeah, no, I, th I think I think having it be exactly promise dot delegated. Uh, I'm I, I that sounds really quite strong to me. I'm very glad about the proxy dot revocable analogy, which is it's a maker function whose signature is the same as the signature of the constructor. So it's understood to use it instead of the constructor when you want this additional feature. Mm -hmm. And proxy dot delegated can be explained exactly the same way. It has, it has, it's, if you use it with the same signature as the constructor, it actually means the same thing the constructor means. Uh, and it's only by virtue of using the additional optional arguments that you get this additional functionality. Uh, and the additional functionality, then we can refer to the promises that it makes with the adjective delegated promises that I think solves all of the terminology problem in terms of, of the noun. It also solves the other problem that we don't need to realize the actual constructor or its prototype because, again, it's returning a promise as far as the uh, as something that promise. Um, the, there are some ramifications, uh, and, to, it, and again, thank you, Alex, for the idea. That was solid. Um, the just, just uh, delegated, I think, came from Sala. Delegated from delegated. Sala. Hanging off of promise came from Alex. Right, right. Okay, good. Um, so the, the static methods would still be attached to promise, as you were saying. They would be yes. simply because. I, yeah, I'm, in, I'm inclined to propose the static methods as static directly on promise and only do something else if we run into resistance. Um, the, just, just so that we. Um, affirm what we're getting ourselves into. This is a world where it makes sense for there to be an object called a delegate um, that is what you pass to the delegated function um, instead of a handler. I wasn't thinking of going that far. Um, I don't, I would still be inclined to call it a handler and we just say that the delegated promise delegates to the handler. So um, that, that's really interesting. Uh, so I just changed the first sentence uh, as to what we discussed. I can mention it as discussed in such meetings. Uh, make sure you give the date because when we come back to reference, when we come back to figure out why did we do that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you want the recording, I guess. <laughs> okay. Um, wow, uh, we landed in a really good place. Um, so, uh, and, and you like the, the remotable presence distinction? So I like remotable and uh, remotable thing uh, where the thing uh, term uh, comes from the eventual send proposal. Um, uh, whether presence is the right word for thing, um, I, I, I do want to revisit uh, right now. Uh, the term presence comes from uh, Chip's Unum model. And what we're, what we're doing in either use, you know, in either of the things we were planning to do with presences uh, is much less than the full Chip Unum presence vision. But uh, remotable, what we're now calling remotables because they're at the distributed object level of abstraction seem to me to be closer in spirit to what Chip meant. Um, but we don't have to stay stuck on what Chip meant. So I want feedback from Chip. 
Yeah, no, I, 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 uh, I concur. Concur with what? What you just said. I think you. Uh, okay, but, but so the the. the, the so I, that... I think it's a step towards the thing, the, the sort of the, the the grand idea I had in mind. It doesn't go all the way there. We don't need to go all the way there. We don't even have a okay. compelling thing driving us there. But I, I, I'm, I'm happy with that. Okay. So are you okay with the thing that's at the eventual send proposal level of abstraction being called a presence? Um, yes, because um, it, 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 it represents the, the 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 notion of the, the 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 sort of local contact point for a thing, um, the, the local whatever the local representative of the thing is, the the the, the use that we're making of it here is a bit narrower, um, um, but it's compatible. Okay, um, and, great. And specifically, anything that the Unum model supports can be bolted onto what the presence is. That that's exactly exactly. Chip, you just used the okay. word representative. Uh, yeah, I, I've been looking through the thesaurus too, but proxy and presence are the best words. <laughs> yeah, well, one right. of the words that I went through in my head and discarded was mascot. Yeah, yeah mascot, I, I, I see too. <laughs> uh, pro proxy is almost as good a word. I don't like proxy simply because it has come to have a particular meaning that it yeah. incorporates the the notion of the proxy itself as being this sort of generic entity that can be used for anything um you know as a piece of glue as opposed to something that has some potentially has some application specific logic embedded in it and um, um presence while what we're talking about here is still kind of generic it 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 uh uh, it doesn't close the door. So let me let me just check one particular. So I, th I think I think we're so I'm happy with where we are. But let me just check it against a particular problem case uh, that Michael and I had talked through and sanity check it against our current terms, which is if you have two different instantiations of oh. If we put it on promise, then it's not possible for there to be two separate instantiations of handled promise in the same realm because there's only one promise mm. in that realm. Yeah. Okay. Um, Ah, 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 no, this, this still comes up. Uh, if you have two different uh, distributed object systems that are that don't know about each other, uh, both of which are built on delegated promises, um, both of which are built on delegated promises, then uh, if, let's call the two, the two distributed object systems uh, X and Y. So uh, if a remotable presence of X is, in, is passed through, as an argument, let's say, through com system Y, from Y's perspective, the thing that X sees as a remotable presence, Y should see as just a remotable object. Um. And that's a little bit weird because the fact that it's a remotable is actually objective now, but we're not are we, do we expose and is, back, back when we might have had multiple handled prompt, we did not expose a predicate, correct? 
So I, I think either you got this backwards or you're saying something surprising to me, which oh, okay. uh, that that remotable presence will appear to X, that remotable presence from X will appear to Y as a presence, but not a remotable. In our current terminology, I think that's- In our current terminology, because we don't know that it's remotable. We haven't marked it as such. So we might be able to sniff it to detect that it's remotable. Well, what, what it's still it just a presence. Be a presence that's not remotable. But maybe I don't understand remoteable. I don't understand the able part of remotable. It's a mark that's introduced by a given comm system to say, of these objects that I know about, the following ones are allowed to be uh, to from another place. Okay. Uh, you, you kind of trailed off there. In, in... Yeah, we had we had this in you too. The it, the notion of remotability is that if you have an, a local object, that uh, if it's pa if, if it passes through the communications layer, um, that it is not sent as data. It is sent as a reference. Uh, 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 uh. I see. Remotable is the is the dual of, of, of presence. Remotable yeah. is a thing that somebody else might have a presence of. Yes. Got yeah, it. it's right. it's a marker for yeah. something that, that has to be represented as a presence elsewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, Michael, okay. I, I agree. You're right. I, I had it backwards. <laughs> so, you're, the question that you were bringing up, I think, is whether Com System Y can do anything, but tunnel things back to X from comm system Y. Right. And the fact that it can use, the fact that it can tell that it's a presence, um, but it, it does not consider it to be anything of its creation. I mean, it, since it can tell it's a presence, it can actually tell that it's not of its creation. So um, it, but can it, it tell it's a presence is one question. So that's a really good question. Um, uh, we actually do provide, even if we don't, didn't provide a predicate, we actually do provide a sneaky way to, oh, 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 oh. Here's the other thing about collapsing handle, the, the ha not having a separate constructor is now the behavior that we're proposing for handled promise dot resolve, we would have to propose that that behavior get folded into promise dot resolve. And we can only do that if it's compatible with the current behavior of promise dot resolve, which I think it is. Yes. Um, but that behavior does in a sneaky way reveal that something is a presence because for a normal object, if you do promise.resolve of normal object twice, you get two different fulfilled promises. So then com system Y can simply do a promise.resolve of the things that it's uh, marshaling and then use that to decide whether to use the static methods to access the object rather than not. Right, so in other, in other words, you, we, we might as well provide a predicate because you can tell. And uh, so if it's a presence, but it's not a presence of creation by com system Y, then all Y knows is it can do tilde on it in order to ask it to convey to you know to delegate those messages to wherever x delegates messages to and that's the extent of what y can can of of the interaction that y can have in general this sounds correct the sneaky predicate sounds scary though i would i would have preferred there not to be a way to tell that a promise is a delegated promise. Um, there is um, a funny pattern that was used in the custom element registry. Um, they had a dot when defined 
method that you just dot give what? a dot when defined uh, and, and you would give it the custom element name and then you would get like, they say like a promise like thing, you know, <laughs> that basically gets resolved. Um, so, so it's kind of like this transparent separation between the promise prototype um, and the fact that you're referring to the same, um, um, uh, you know, asynchronous um, trigger without actually involving promises so, so to speak. So, so there is no promise object, but rather you pass a name and then you get a thenable. Um, obviously, in, in a custom element registry, um, an element can remain undefined until the page is unloaded. So, so it could be an, you know, um, just uh, you know, one way one way you could go about this is you would say when whatever. And then uh, that basically is the then of the promise. You know, I think if I get where you're driving, uh, Dersala, if, if instead of saying is is presence and bolting things into promise dot resolve. Oh no, we still need it in promise dot resolve. Yeah. Yeah. There's one grounds on which um, uh, uh, this might be this this new way of folding everything back into the promise class uh, might be more friendly to the committee, or the committee might be more friendly to it. Uh, is it simply reduces the total surface of the language compared to a brand what seems to be a whole brand new promise class? even if it's not a complete class because it doesn't have its own prototype. Um, uh, this is just uh, enhancing the behavior of the promises we've got without introducing really for most purposes, anything that seems like a new category of promise. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I propose that we're done with this topic for now. I think we've actually resolved all the naming issues we wanted to resolve and done a lot more. Uh, I see uh, Calbert, go ahead. Yeah, just a couple of continuity checks. I think that these are easy. Um, I think that we should relax def delegated to simply delegate um, because of it would rhyme to say that resolve returns a resolved, reject returns a rejected, delegate returns a delegated. Um, I think that that's consistent. Um, well, uh, so, so actually, I never, I never say resolve returns a resolved. Uh, I say resolve returns a resolved promise. Resolve returns a resolved promise in the same way that delegate returns a delegated promise. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, I never refer to resolved or rejected as a lone noun. Uh, I don't know if other people do or not. But yeah, I would be very comfortable saying promise dot um, uh, delegate. Uh, was, should it be promise dot delegate or promise dot delegated? That's an interesting question. Well, my suggestion is it should be delegate because that's consistent with the verbs that exist. Okay. 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 So promise dot delegate returns a delegated promise. Okay. Okay. Good. 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 There was something else, but I think that's enough to close out the topic for now. Okay. Um, um, thank you, everybody. Um, I'm probably going yeah. to step off now. I have some errands to run, but yeah. Okay. okay yeah, that, uh, was, that so, was great. So Mark, you'll, you can expect the CPRs for changing names and implementing the remotable concept in the Marshall layer. Great. Great. Awesome. Okay. Thank oh, uh, I, re I remembered the second one. The other one oh, was, yes. might make sense to say, um, instead of remotable, we could use presentable because that pairs with pre presence. 
an object that is presentable as one that may create a presence in another uh, on the other side of a connection. Mm, I think that word has other connotations that 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 are uh, uh, um, potentially diverting. M much as passable. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> In fact, the same one. <laughs> yeah. That's interesting, yeah. Yeah, I have been using passable, uh, even though I'm aware of the double meaning. Um, <laughs> uh, do two wrongs make a right? <laughs> but um, I think for, with regard to these terms, I think I th I, I'm very happy with where we ended up. No, but three lefts do. All right, um, I, that is literally the last thing I can think of on this topic. Okay, um, uh, I proposed next because of deadlines uh, that we go to uh, Kriti. Um, okay. When is that next incubator meeting? Uh, Twenty seven. Okay, right. Uh, so um, it's ne next week, uh, Tuesday, I think next week or Monday, November. Okay. So before um, the next time the CES meeting meets, yes. Yes. Um, so a, a, a couple of a couple of things. So we have the slides. Um, I think I did share the slides at some point. I remember. I can I can <laughs> definitely paste them I, here. I actually don't remember seeing slides. Uh, let me let me share that quickly here in the chat. Um, uh, I was planning to put it in the, okay. Uh, so everyone should have access to it. Let me see. These are the slides uh, for the update. Um, are you able to go, uh, you know, uh, speak over them while sharing them or? Uh, sure, yeah, I can share, I can share. I mean, uh, there's not much here. Uh, uh, where is the sharing screen here? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah. Very quickly to go over then. Um, so the slides are just saying this is an update. Um, these are the three main changes since the last time that we present this. We simplified the API. We will give you some details. We introduced the layering, which is necessary for uh, the host interactions. Uh, we didn't have any of that in the initial uh, spec. And we have finalized all the de pending details on the spec itself. Um, on the API changes, we have removed the ability to control the this value. Now you get this value of a new realm is always going to be the global of the realm. Um, we rename can, global can, can to. I, can, can I yes. interrupt you there? Yes. So, um, uh, does this mean that? Uh, one would not be able to, on a non-browser host, emulate a browser, in particular, the bizarre behavior about window versus window proxy. Right. So we, we remember we talk about this and we say, well, maybe this is something that we could do at the evaluator level, um, okay. at the, the, the compartment level, um, not necessarily at the realm level. Okay, good. Um, so we renamed global uh, accessor to be global disk, so to match the global disk from the language now. Uh, we have eliminated evaluate in favor of using the eval, the global eval. You can take that out when you create the iframe, the, the, the ROM. Um, we removed the ability to read the intrinsics uh, for now. Uh, you can get the intrinsics from the newly created ROM as well. And we have introduced import as a new method that allows to uh, import a module from a ROM that is running on an environment that does not have eval, like a CSP configuration that disables eval, so you will not be able to use eval at all. You have to fetch the module. This is equivalent to what happened in browsers today when, you, when it comes to um, uh, eliminating the possibility to use eval, you still can use import to go and fetch and evaluate some code. Right now with CSP, can you um, uh, suppress the, the 
uh, ability to use dynamic import to can, uh, import you, from a calculated name? You can you cannot uh, eliminate the language feature. You can eliminate the possibility to hit an entry point that returns the module by closing the 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 network activity that you can do. So um, uh, I remember at one point there was discussion, at least, of a CSP setting that would succeed at suppressing uh, import through the dynamic import expression uh, while not suppressing uh, import declarations. Is there any CSP way to do that? I, I haven't seen that. In fact, last night that we talked about, we, we did open an issue three months ago, I think, to have ability to suppress import in different ways. And the answer was from Dominic saying that no, that doesn't really uh, okay. belong to to the DOM APIs, or at least we were trying to see how to suppress a CSP or by having the ability to control the import maps in a generic way. So you could say if someone is trying to import anything outside of this set, uh, just simply don't allow that. And you could do, we were asking for specifically a wildcard, like saying in the import map, if you try to do anything, okay. just point to this right. thing. Right, okay. Good, good, um, good. So, so okay. we could try it again um, with new friends now. Um, um, so the Realm API becomes this thing. It's very straightforward. It doesn't have much. It doesn't have any specific configuration. Just one accessor, one method, a constructor. That's it. Um, this is an example, just a very simple example, how to evaluate something or how to import something. And then where we are right now, which is the end of the presentation, the, which is what I want to talk about in, in this meeting. Uh, there, there are two main open questions. One is the mechanical concerns. Um, this is how it works with the DOM. And we have been working on these. Um, uh, the current position, uh, that, that we have is that, uh, and we discussed it here at some point, is that uh, the realm itself does not have any dumb semantics. Uh, the realm is created by a, another realm that might have dumb semantics. That means a, a window uh, or a, a worker or some other ways to access a, a, the new, new realm. And, and from there, you can create as many as you want nested, but the semantics are really, um, the, the, when it comes to DOM semantics, it's really the semantics of the nearest well that has DOM semantics. Um, right, the DOM semantics, instead of being attached to a realm, is being attached to a realm subtree. Yes. Um, and, and this, and because the creation of the realm and the association with the with that other realm that has done semantics is a static. You could even do caching and such. So it's not really a dynamic lookup of any kind. Um, uh, and then that seems to be flying okay, although we will, we'll see in that meeting with the implementers. Um, and then the second one is really the, the big point, which I think is related, but is that um, direct access to other global synchronously is a problem. And so I have been thinking about this a lot and try to see how we could approach this. Uh, isn't this a confusion? I believe it's a, a confusion in the sense that um, when they say direct access to other globals as a problem, what they really are saying, and I'm, I'm splitting this into three concerns. So this concern for me is really three concerns. And I, I want to run it by you, see what you think. The three concerns that I see is number one is that um, a access, instead of saying direct access to other globals, you're seeing, you're really just saying direct access to a global that has some non semantics, like the, um, the possibility to be detached or, or some other semantics that is very dumb specific. Um, second problem is the window proxy 
and 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 how the window proxy semantics are problematic for many for uh, for, for many different reasons and the fact that you can get a, a, a window an iframe in this case to be refreshed to get different URL to get a, a, a new created document uh, under the hood all of those are just simply done semantics like in a realm you don't get any of that a realm is not detachable a realm is not something that you can um, uh, uh, detach in any significant way I mean there's no way to detach it other than detaching the nearest global with the Tom semantics so for me those two things are most important one to clarify and then the third one is the garbage collector which I believe is related to the fact that you are detachable um, what is the garbage collection issue the, the garbage collection issue is that well at some point they have a lot of semantics that are uh, related to the fact that a, a, a reference belongs to a realm no longer connected. And you should be able to determine that and automatically um, uh, invalidate some operations that might be carried on by that code. Like the example of this is the add event listener. When you try to add an event listener to a window, that you have a reference to and you're doing it from a realm that is already detached and it throws so an error it, saying so for all three of those issues with the second bullet doesn't the first bullet address all of them yeah i, I believe so i believe so and that's my hope <laughs> uh, the fact okay. that if we, we define the, the semantics of it saying this is not really a problem anymore can because I, can I, can I suggest maybe some terminology that might yes, help? Yes, 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 please. Uh, which is the um, the globals of realms that are created by existing means, new iframes, new workers, and all that. Those are, well, obviously, I'm not sure, sure about terminology for workers. Let's just talk about the on the, the browsing side. Um, uh, that those globals are windows. You know, the global of an iframe is a window. When you use the Realm API to create a Realm, the global of that Realm is not a window. And this, the concern of the second bullet should be a concern about direct access to windows. Something that's just a global and is not a window, there's no reason to be concerned about direct access to it. I believe they are looking at this from the perspective of the it, it is my it is my perception of this issue that they are not only thinking about these from those terms and and I, I believe what you're saying is correct like this is just this is just as you said before this is just equivalent to a closure or a private field or some other ways to give you encapsulation or integrity preserving semantics there. It's not different from that. Um, but I believe the fact that there is some association with a window at some point, and that window can be detached, have to be some ways for them to um, but, identify. But that's, I mean, but, but that's, I mean, I think you've already solved that, which is uh, every non window global is in a subtree whose root is a window and everything that you're everything that we're currently attributing to the nature of the realm associated with a given window we would now simply associate exactly all of those characteristics with the subtree of realms the subtree of non-window realms rooted in a given window I mean, that's, really, for me, that's that's clearly the solution. But I, I, I still, I want them to acknowledge that the problem is not really about accessing all the windows directly, or the globals directly, but all the windows. Um, and hopefully, yeah. we we have we have enough information now. But I'm not running very so, confident so, on this one. 
Okay, so let me, let me ask about the nature of the resistance. Did you get resistance from anybody that you believe understood this, understood the proposal, in particular, understood this distinction? Um, I think you understand this. Um, we also get some feedback from Mozilla, so um, which they also state that they have a similar concern. This is Mozilla and I from Mozilla. Mm -hmm. And um, he's talking specifically about iframes as well. Uh, this is the note from Daniel that specifically said what we're saying. So we were saying, we defer to the pattern window worker for all kinds of behavior. We don't care about what what the realm is doing is delegated um but still we're getting some pushback and but there's not much detail here about what what that problem is so so i so uh under the hypothesis that uh any of these people with resistance pick pick any of them let's say sure under the hypothesis that they fully understand what we're actually proposing, including this whole subtree concept, uh, can you explain what the remaining objection is or what the objection is that is not addressed by the subtree concept? Uh, right now, no. I mean, okay. I, I was trying to, book, to, to, to get them to be more specific about Mm -hmm. um and the response was was this so he was asking what kind of detail do you want uh the, the high level concern is this thing mm -hmm. okay so so i would so i would say that that sentence right there to me is a clear sign that he does not understand what we're proposing and that's what this means about trying to get everyone to understand what we're proposing so okay, good. That will be now, I, for my own understanding of the realms proposal, can I ask some clarifying questions? Yes. Is it, uh, is it our intention that the realm API be usable in order to uh, provide a rational implementation of all the way that existing APIs create bags of intrinsics today already do? like iframes, like Node's virtual environment? Is, is the intention to lift this into the language so that there's a common bedrock for all of these environments? Or is that, uh, that so that, that, is, that is intended? Um, so, so it would yeah, be that, possible- that's one of them. That's one of them. And we have it listed in the previous uh, slides. I mean, let me find them here. Um, see, see, I think we use this one. Um, in this one, we have in a slide about that. So the, the, the name is, on slash. Go ahead. This is what I think. This is what you were asking for. The yes. Uh, the goals. Uh, is uh, two 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 goals. Uh, the, the one is this is a building block for virtualization for us to do all kind of things, and the second one is we want to standardize this behavior so we can use it in a browser. Mm -hmm. Um, cool. So, so it would, it should be possible in terms of this API to refactor existing implementations based uh, of like iframes, for example, in terms of this API. Yes. It's, if you are, if you're using an iframe just to uh, create an iframe, you, you don't use a DOM, you just use the iframe to evaluate some code that does some operations, you get all back, you should be mm -hmm. able to do that with the ROM, just like so if you do a node with a VM. Yeah. Uh, in your the last bullet of your presentation that you just gave us today, um, you make the statement that realm realms are counter are are, are uh, in conflict with the current design principles of the web platform. Um, uh, I I would want to put scare quotes around this or frame it as, uh, as, as some worry that this not that it is uh, not not that it is a fact because I think that the counter argument is. The counter argument is specifically that you're trying to create not you're not trying to create an API that's in conflict with the web platform. You're trying to create an API that explains 
the web platform as it exists today at the language level so that that explanation can be shared between um, uh, non non web environments and the web. Is that about right? Well, well this one, th this one is just an implemented concern. So we're, we're talking about what they say to us, not what we are but saying. All, to all the more reason to put quotes around it. <laughs> sure. I, I see this this language counter to the design principles of the web and variations on that sentence. Um, uh, if it seems to be because there's sort of recurring flavor of pushback that is a way of saying um, I have vague unarticulated objections to this that I can't actually explain and so I'm going to say that it's counter to the design principles of the web um, and so it's it's a difficult objection to push back against because well first of all different people mean different things um, right sometimes they have some specific concept that, 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 that they think it's in conflict with, and sometimes it's just a general purpose phrase that is like, well, this, this, you know, this isn't, this is outside my comfort zone, therefore I don't like it. And, and the, the trick there is how to, how to get somebody to converge on a, a concrete objection that you can make a counter argument to, or possibly that's a real problem and, and then you need to solve the problem um, without, um, without provoking an immune reaction or provoking a fight that you don't need to have. And this has always been a, a bit of a challenge in, in some, of the, some of the tensions in the TC39 process. Yeah, that's why I was trying to see if we could at least get them to agree that the direct access to other globals is not really about globals, it's really about window. And uh, saying, well, window has a bizarre behavior with a window proxy. Window is detachable. And window has some very specific semantics when it comes to uh, garbage collection and, and, and uh, usage of uh, or uh, triggering certain behavior after you are detached which might be, we could say maybe two of them and not talk about garbage collect, collector directly, just saying the window proxy and the detachable nature of the window, those two are really the, the concerns, not really about the global. And then drill down on those. And if we can get them to agree on that, then we could say that the semantics that we're proposing, that you have to walk up to find the global that has the DOM semantics to be sufficient to make the run just one more closure on the window that you have, basically. Yeah, I, I often thought of, of realms in terms of, it's like taking the kind of core idea that's behind iframes and, and, and separating the, the HTML piece of it from the other stuff that it does. And it's basically, it's not, contrary to the web, it's taking an idea that the web gave us and allowing us to ab abstract it out so we can apply it in other domains. So, yeah, and then- they're, they're coming- Oh, sorry. They're coming from the, they're coming from a, another proposal on the, on, on the DOM side of things, which is the, the iframe without a DOM, which they want to implement. This is an iframe that has only the, um, some, some capabilities, but not a, not a DOM. Doesn't have a window, a document. Um, I haven't spent too much time on that proposal, but uh, that one will have a asynchronous communication with the host. Um, seems I don't think it will be synchronous, but that's an idea that they have. Yeah. So how, is it different, saying, how is it different? How is that different from a worker? Um, I don't know, good question. Seems like to the extent that it's different from a worker, it's, it's exactly this proposal. And the main difference is that it came from the web standards process rather than the TC39 process. It might be that I got it wrong and it's not asynchronous, but maybe synchronous and then it will be different from the- worker. Yeah, if it's got an asynchronous API, but I'm-, I'm mm -hmm. There's, yeah. 
it, yeah, if the but asynchronous sure. API is post message, then it seems like it's exactly the work. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. the, 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 shadow, the, the shadow behind this is that there is certainly a group of people, uh, it's certainly Im implied by Shu's uh, last message, is that there is a group of people who, uh, who believe ardently that, um, that the creation of, of, of bags of intrinsics like iframes were a mistake and we should attempt to get to a place where such things are no longer needed. Uh, they will gradually find a way to wean the web of using this and then maybe someday, uh, maybe someday um, have, have a, foot, a leg to stand on to get rid of it. Um, and I think that if you call them out for having that agenda, it starts to it it starts to um, show the picture that that isn't a realistic end. Uh, that in the interim, at least until we can have until they can realize that agenda of eliminating the notion of having multiple realms entirely, um, it makes sense to consolidate what already exists today at the language layer so that there's some shared sense between uh, browsers and non-browser environments. Yeah, so actually I disagree completely with that, um, <laughs> uh, which is um, uh, that there is a proposal that enables, there's a pair of proposals now as we split it, that enables one to do all sorts of things without ever creating a new realm. And that's what we're in fact planning to, you know, doing with XS, which is if you freeze all the primordials and you've got compartments so you can create new global scopes, then in fact, there are tremendous numbers of things you can do without ever creating a new realm, uh, in, including <laughs> all of, but so it's just tremendously ironic that the people who were pushing this, we, it was a mistake to create new sets of intrinsics are also the ones pushing against compartments and frozen <laughs> realms. Yeah, well, for sure. Um, the, uh, the only thing, and, and in fact, the only thing that remains that, uh, that you, well, there are many things that remain that you can't do without realms, but can do with compartments. The, the, the one that remains really that stands out the most is the, the possibility of being able to say, Hey, um, we have this realm and we can't futz with it because there's, there's, there's user code that we need to continue being able to run and hit. We also want to run things inside of compartments in a in a frozen realm so we do need a second realm we might not need a lot of realms but we do at least one have one realm so that we do need one more realm so that we can freeze that one um and yeah it, it, yeah it depends on what you're trying to do uh, mm -hmm. uh for the browser obviously we, we you can't break the tremendous amount of old code that relies on uh unmodified you know on on fully mutable traditional realms, sets of intrinsics, but uh, for new code, like you know, what we're planning to do uh, on XS, uh, XS never plans to support multiple realms because it, there's no reason to, uh, and multiple compartments with one frozen realm satisfies all of their use cases. Because yes. microcontrollers don't need 1401 emulation mode. <laughs> So, so I, additionally, I don't know if I will have time to finish the explainer, which they asked for. Um, so far, I have some, some, I think, some information here. I will continue working on it. I will send a pull request on so this more complete. But, so they were asking for a explainer type of document similar to what they do for DOM APIs, DOM proposals. So, um, We'll see how that goes, but I'm touching on uh, modules, um, uh, security uh, clarifications, specifically that this is not about security. We talk about these um, uh, alternative to the solution. Um, I need to fill out the, if someone wants to help on this one, is uh, to fill out the, um, how this relates to the other other similar proposals like the compartment uh, API um, and explain some of the future or forward forward looking statements around this um, I don't know um, yeah so I don't know if I will get the chance to finish this I don't have too much time for now until that meeting but 
we'll see how that goes. Uh, if some of you can participate, uh, please do. Yeah. Um, uh, Calvert, will, will you be able to attend the next incubator meeting? Uh, you're, you're muted. You're, I can't promise because I don't know when it is, but I do intend to when I find out. Okay. I'll just see uh, uh, your. I just see you on the on the agenda. Uh, are you part of the reflector? Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Who who do I make a request of to get? Um, In the reflector, uh, you make a request to add a new user. By filing <laughs> by filing an I do it by filing an issue. Yes, there is a template for that. Okay. I'll do that right now. Um, all right, that's all. Good luck pinging, pinging Brian. Okay. Gross. So, um, uh, Calvert, while I add you to the final issue for you for the reflector, why don't you take us on to uh, the next topic? Cool. Um, uh, all I can offer today is a status report uh, on on getting the compartment shim to fully emulate the. Sorry about the leaf blower. That wasn't intentional. Um, the, an update on the status of the compartment import support. Um, I have a stack of changes that bring it in um, into the shim. The, there, there are some lingering issues I need to work out because it entrains Babel as a, Babel as a dependency. And uh, um, there's some trouble getting that to work in all three of the module systems that we support. But it's, uh, it's coming along. The, um, this, what, what will happen is, oh, oh for one, a, 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 a matter of um, uh, just logistics, I intend at some point to split the compartment shim from the lockdown shim um, and create a new uh, adagoric slash compartment package uh, that would be where the, uh, where the compartment shim would live and it will be fully decoupled from lockdown. Um, and then the... Uh, the next step after that is, um, yeah, import will be coming and the compartment shim will export both compartment and a module static record constructor. Um, we had a conversation yesterday about how deeply, uh, uh, how deeply we need to, how much of the API we need to expose to the outside world. I think that there remain some open questions about how we make other languages in JavaScript mutually linkable in a compartment like WASM. Um, and this might also feed in to uh, the conversation about how the module attributes proposal goes. Um, yeah. Uh, and regardless of the shape of the module compartment proposal, pardon, the module attributes proposal, I'm sure yeah. that we can implement it, though I'm sure that also we would prefer not to. Yeah, so the, the, the attributes proposal, um, the, the, the more, that when you talk about it, the more it seems like having the attributes come from the importer uh, is just tremendously inappropriate. Um, and uh, I, I try to, um, I'm, I'm having a hard time imagining what the security problem was in having the attributes come from the provider of the module. Yeah, I think that we need to have uh, we need to add, uh, we need to get that written down so that we can read it. Uh, and I don't know where that that concern came from, or, but we need to find out who can articulate it and um, and then see if we can push back on that straw man. Because in my 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 take on this is that the module specifier should be sufficient as a cache key within a compartment, and that the rules for elevating a module specifier to a module instance within a compartment should be consistent. Um, and perhaps those, and those, and those rules should be defined on a per compartment basis. Um, the con uh, Brian Warner yesterday suggested that some compartments might actually use web-based rules and realize the compartment, uh, realize the module type based off of uh, the, the MIME type that's obtained from the server, whereas compartments that are realized from uh, node style packages uh, would ideally all, uh, in, infer how to realize the module based off of the module specifier and metadata to the compartment, since that's the, the norm for that style of packaging. Um, yeah, the, 
the big open question that uh, uh, that I'm beginning to think about now and invite you all to begin thinking about now is uh, um, what kind of API we need to add onto the compartment uh, proposal in order to facilitate linkage um, between non-JavaScript module types. And I think that this might take the shape of having a module static record interface that could be implemented in different ways depending on the language um, or, or, or the source of the binding. Um, which would uh, which would realize uh, which would carry uh, which would mean that the import hook would provide uh, um, something that implements the module's uh, static record interface um, in such a way that it can orchestrate any uh, an underlying implementation from any language um, that may become I'm not sure how much grossness of the internals will have to be realized. Uh, in the public API in order to facilitate that, it might be, uh, it almost certainly means that uh, we'll have to have some sort of API for ex uh, allowing uh, intermodule linkage um, to be expressed for any other language, um, like being able to carry, uh, carry updated values from one module to another is probably something that would have to be um, public. Yeah. And, and this proposal itself, in terms of just modularizing proposals, this proposal itself doesn't need to propose the concrete API for uh, accommodating other languages, uh, but it, it has to, um, we have to be confident that there's a place it goes and have a sense of what the concrete API might be so that we know we're not painting ourselves into a corner. And then it can be a later proposal um, uh, that tries to pin down what, what you have to add to the compartment proposal in order for the loading to support other, other languages that create modules. Yeah, I'm relatively confident that we don't, we, that we have not painted ourselves into a corner. I think the, 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 next, the, the step that would need to happen next in order to uh, in order to support other languages would just be a generalization on of uh, instead of a concrete module static record type that that would be generalized to an interface that others could implement. Yeah, that sounds right to me. Yeah, well, that's all I've got. Uh, reviews would, uh, if anybody's watching the repository for reviews, anything would, uh, any help would be welcome. So, um, anything else anybody wants to talk about? And if not, um, we, it's always, it's always welcome to adjourn early. We covered a lot of ground. Uh, Chip, you're muted. Yeah, yeah, no, I just realized, uh, I think we did cover a lot of ground there. It feels like we, We've had three meetings. <laughs> yeah. And it's still yeah. Okay. So yeah, I say we declare victory and go home. Okay. Okay. So uh Sala, can you uh, turn off recording?